Hello and welcome to my health channel. Today I want to talk about osteoarthritis. I have chosen to split this video into two parts. The first part, which is this video, will cover what osteoarthritis is all about and will cover the symptoms, the causes and the diagnosis. The second part will cover how it impacts on one's life, the complications and how to manage this condition. We will also talk about the possible treatments that one can access to manage one's life. I chose to speak on this condition osteoarthritis because in the United Kingdom, for instance, over 10 million are living with this condition and are over 45 years of age. 355 million are living with this condition worldwide. These people suffer from some other kinds of arthritis. But for the purpose of this video, I'm going to concentrate strictly on osteoarthritis. Osteoarthritis is a condition that makes people live in pain, fatigue, and in isolation. It is a very common condition of the joints. And as you probably know, we have different joints in our bodies. You can now begin to think about the joints in the neck, the lower back, the hips, base of thumb, knees, base of toe. A joint is basically where two or more bones meet. These bones that are likely to get more affected are those joints that carry our weight. The hip and knee joints are the joints that we use in our everyday life. We use these joints daily. Another joint that we all use is the joints of the hand. We use our hands to eat, cut things, carry things, lift things, write on papers, and many more things that we do with our hands. Permit, permit me here to explain what is between the joints. A joint has tough coating. The coating is smooth and slippery. It is called cartilage. Cartilage simply covers the surface of our bones. Cartilage also does help the bones to move against each other so there won't be any friction. If the cartilage becomes worn or damaged, or part of this cartilage thins and the surface becomes rough and the bones begin to rub against each other, um, the, uh, it may, the bones may wear away, osteoarthritis has developed. This is when you hear that the cartilage has wear and tear. We also know that when the bones are very badly damaged, the tissue inside the joints become more active than what it would normally be. Osteoarthritis is very common in people over the age of 45. I have seen younger adults with osteoarthritis in the course of my work. Honestly, as we get older, most of us will develop this condition in some parts of our joints. Most people hardly get any pain, symptoms. Many people are not even aware of it. Now I'm going to talk about the symptoms um, of osteoarthritis, which include joint pain, tenderness and stiffness, inflammation in and around the joints, excess fluid, restricted movement of the joints, weakness and muscle wasting. The pain becomes worse when you, have, when you move your joints. It is important to note that symptoms are very symptoms vary and the reason why this happens we will never get to know it is not clear affected joints may be swollen there may be various reasons so for the finger joints they are caused by extra growth of the extra bone and it can be hard and knobbly it may be soft as a result perhaps extra fluid inside the joint capsule. Sometimes people may find the joints making crackling sounds when you move it or grating. When this happens, it is referred to as crepitus. Sometimes joint structures can become less stable, especially when the muscles around the joints has become weakened. Physiotherapists would advise that people do exercises to help strengthen the muscles that support the joints. Now I'm going to talk about the causes of arthritis. Nobody seems to know what causes osteoarthritis. 
all we do know and hear about is wear and tear. However, we do hear about other factors that may increase or decrease the risk of getting osteoarthritis. So I'm going to start with age. We all know that younger people occasionally develop osteoarthritis. Usually this starts from late 40s onwards. Some have um, looked at aging because aging comes with changes. We can look at weight again, muscle weakness, when bone is less able to heal well. Then we're going to be looking at uh, joint abnormalities. If someone developed um, this during childhood or were born with it, it could lead to more severe arthritis. I'm going to look at obesity now. Uh, um, if someone is overweight, weight bearing becomes very difficult on those joints such as the knees and the hip. To improve the outlook, it is good to lose some weight. Gender. Women tend to get osteoarthritis more in the knees and hands. Okay. They also say injury or operation on the joint may lead to this problem later in life. If someone had an injury and they start exercise too soon after the surgery, when the joints have not properly healed, it may lead to osteoarthritis in the joint later in life. Genetic factors. When we inherit genes, they are passed down to the next generation. So that if there's, there is or has been arthritis in the hand, knee, hip, in our lineage, it shows it runs in families. This is referred to as nodal osteoarthritis. Studies have shown that osteoarthritis is more severe in Afro-Caribbean, Afro-American, Black, older adults. The findings also suggested that racial or ethnic minorities get osteoarthritis a lot more. According to the Center for Disease Control and Protection, osteoarthritis is common amongst blacks. We also know that adults over 18 who are obese are diagnosed and diagnosed with um, osteoarthritis, especially with arthritis of the hip and knee. Now, diagnosis, everyone should ensure that they get an accurate diagnosis because there are so many different types of diagnosis and some would need different treatment. Usually, diagnosis must be based on symptoms and history of how it has started. It will be based on physical signs and observations that your doctor finds as per examination. Okay, symptoms have been discussed earlier in this video, so please refer to the symptoms. Now I'm going to talk about tests. Um, osteoarthritis hasn't got any specific blood tests. There is no harm in having blood tests, which looks at the bone, which may look at the bone profile. This will help the doctor to rule out any other types of arthritis. MRI of knee are helpful because it will show changes in the bone that is not seen on X-rays. MRI will pick other joints or bone problems that could be causing my the symptoms. X-rays are not very helpful. X-rays can pick up calcium de deposits within the joints. Okay, now I'm going to say, um, please look out for part two of my video, um, which would include once again how it affects the individual, how the individual can get relief from the symptoms, how to manage one's daily life with this condition. Um, and I will talk about the complications too, okay? Um, if you look on the videos, you will see people swollen fingers. That's um, a symptom of, um, of arthritis. Look at the knees, it's swollen. That's another symptom of, of arthritis. It's called um, inflammation, okay? So um, if you look at the picture again, you're going to see the different types of arthritis, the body areas, the vertebrae at the back, those are points as well where arthritis can develop. Okay, if you look on the picture again, you will see the knees and you'll see the cartilage, cartilage that I explained to you earlier. There are some foods that you can avoid when you have arthritis. Okay, um, if you look, it, 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 the picture tells you all about the joints, the joints, the joints, the part of joints where we have more pain. Okay, the knees. All the lighted areas of the screen on the screen are the joints where people develop arthritis. Okay, 
Um, if you look at the videos, please, it will tell you about the stages of the arthritis, the symptoms of arthritis. If these are what the doctor will use to make a diagnosis. So they will ask you questions based on what is happening to you, when you started, the pain, you know, and how you've been managing it and the frequency. Those are things that make them to um, be able to make a diagnosis and then refer you for um, tests and then confirm diagnosis of what's happening to you. So my people, I will strongly, strongly advise that when this space starts, that you don't waste more, any more time. You go and see a doctor so they can do some observations and tests and then be able to diagnose you at the early stage, okay? Okay, once again, thank you for watching my video. Share it to your friends. Like and comment on my page. Thank you very much once again and I'll see you in my second video. Bye.